So with a new season comes a new exotic that we can get our hands on, and although Fell Winter's Helm was a last season exotic, it still is a relatively new and exciting exotic to main for what it can offer. Very flexible and simple to use, the Fell Winter's Helm makes traversing content 100% more easier thanks to the exotic trait. It has one of the best exotic traits in game, that can trivialize many content with ease by allowing you to debuff enemies within a large to small vicinity. And when combined with mods that can further make your build more powerful in its own domain, you get a build that can not only debuff from a large scale, but also makes your teammates' lives a lot more smoother against hardcore content. Hello everyone, Freedy here, here and welcome back to today's build session for Destiny 2. I hope you're all keeping safe out there no matter where you are in the world. Today we are going to craft a debuff and suppression build for all general play using Fairwinter's Helm and Warmind Cell mods. We're also going to go over the specific weapons to use to make the build more stronger and of course the pros and cons to the set. For newer or older players, this build I'm about to go over will be very helpful for the new content we are dealing with, but also the new dungeon where you'll be below light and will need to survive as long as you can, and the public event as well. So the subclass that we'll be using today is the Atonement of Control, as I believe it's the best for what we're going with, but it has a lot of flexibility for changing around. Within the subclass tree, there are two perks I'll be making full use of, that is Ball Lightning, which fires a R projectile via melee, and Ionic Trace, which provides a chance for ability energy to be returned back to you upon kills made. Both these perks here are beneficial in their own way, with setting up my build to always have ability energy freely available, and thus making use of Fairwinds' Helm perk available all the time, as long as the conditions are right. Now there is only one slight problem with using this specific setup with Fell Winters, and that is proccing Fell Winters' exotic trait only affects those within your radius and not where your ball lightning is located. Not a major issue, as you're going to be up close to some of the enemies anyways, plus you can use this to weaken enemies to the point of where they are in finisher state, and then use your finisher to defeat said enemies to trigger your helm's perk with a larger radius, so it's still a win-win in many ways. Of course, if this doesn't suit you, then you can always opt in to use the Tumor of Elements to make use of the Raising Storm perk, or a Tumor of the Fison subclass, where we have Atomic Breach and Dark Matter, which both when combined together with a flexible build like mine, can allow you to take on the higher level adds with greater effect. For the grenades, pulse grenades tend to do the trick with clearing out and damaging large health adds with ease, although storm grenades are also great for covering ground when needed most. For weapons, our main focus will be of course having the 7th Seraph Secondary to proc Warmind Cells, and the new exotic grenade launcher for its immense damage. Our heavy can be flexible, but I would recommend using a sword for the more DPS focused adds. Now talking about the new exotic, the Wither Horde exotic grenade launcher has been making the round with a lot of players for its sheer damage and effectiveness at taking on mages to ultras with relative ease. And I've got to say, this exotic is nuts at what it does. You see, when you're firing it at the ground, it leaves a pool of damaging blight energy that hurts those that come into it, which makes it great for area control and crowd control. At the same time, if you fire it directly at a target instead, it will generally stick to them and damage them over time until it then stops or until the enemy dies, to which it then drops the poor blight on the ground as well. It's such a simple but effective weapon that does the job it's designed really well, and when combined with a group of other players using it against say a boss, it can instantly destroy a boss's health within a few seconds. Now with the build I have here and the debuff I can proc via Fair Winter's Helm, soloing most ultras and bosses become a whole lot more easier, but only if I manage to proc it. If I can proc the exotic debuff, then it's not a problem as the exotic is very powerful on its own anyways, and I do recommend you use it if you can alongside with the new exotic, it really is an amazing combo. For our secondary, I'm going to be using the 7th Sarah VY7 submachine gun with drop mag, feeding frenzy, and firmly planted. Now, I chose this weapon to accompany my War Mind Cell mod for its perk combination, suiting the build perfectly for dropping enemies in the instant, and also instantly reloading within a small time frame, which for a build to where I'm always going to be up close and personal, for the melee side of things, suits it fairly well for the job it's designed. Now, for the War Mind Cell side of things, I'm using it to create War Mind Cells on the go and fully control the field the way I like it. Using mods such as Celia Suppression alongside Fair Winters create a deadly combo to where you can control how enemies act when against you, as if I use my Exotic's Helm against them, they will be suppressed and debuffed, while if I use my Celia mod, it will also suppress them for a long time. Basically, 
Whichever method I choose, I will always have the suppression effect active, no matter where I am and no matter who I'm against. And now lastly for the heavy, I have gone with the Temptation Hook Sword with Relentless Strike and Flash Counter. One of the two new sword frames introduced to us in game, the Temptation's Hook has the caster frame, which allows the user to launch a heavy projectile towards an enemy and do a nifty amount of damage towards them. Swords in general have received a large buff since last season, and now with the new sword frame available, it allows us to do even more DPS damage compared to grenade launchers, for instance. My sword also comes with a perk called Flash Counter, which allows me to disorientate and weaken attackers after blocking straight away, which acts the same way as if I had the Fairwinder's Helm active. So now I have three methods of suppressing enemies with ease. For our stats, I've chosen to focus the majority of my stats into the Strength and Discipline stat, as these two are the main ones that will be getting the most action out of all my abilities and subclass in general. With both our Strength and Discipline stat at the 60 ranges, this will provide us with a 51 second cooldown, which is more than enough needed to flex the build out with our abilities active. Now the reasoning behind the choice is that the subclass perk Ionic Traces will provide ability NG back on the fly upon kills, so we don't need to go overboard with the two stats, as we can dedicate it to other stats instead. With this available, it means my recovery or super stat can be focused on more and pushed up higher, so the build has more flexibility in other fields. Alternatively, if you feel that you're not going to be using your grenades too much, I would advise you to take 20 stats of the discipline stat and then place it into your strength stat instead to reduce your cooldown from a standard 51 seconds to a 41 seconds instead. For armor pieces, you're going to need at least 3 current or last season armor pieces with void affinity so we can slot in our warmind cells mods. You'll also need one arc affinity armor piece or bond for a warmind cell as well. Our exotic Felwinter's Helm doesn't need a specific affinity with the build unless you want to benefit a certain weapon that you're using. If such, focus on the mods that give you a bigger reserves or ammo finder. Now with the main subjects covered and broken down, here are the mods we are currently using for the build. Head, Resilience mod. Arm, Strength and Cellular Suppression mod. Chest, Strength, Grenade Launcher reserves and Global Reach mod. A leg, Strength, Grenade Launcher Dexterity and Warbind Protection mod. Bond, Concussive Dampener, Distribution, Outreach and Blessing of Ashbutin mod. So with a collection of items and gear all combined together, we now get a fantastic build for endgame and general play to go ahead and mess around with. The effectiveness of the build was to really rely on you getting up close and personal to pop off the cells and fail winter's effect to cause a large scale disruption effect to all those within the Venicity and as shown in the video, it has a very large effect of control on the field you're in. Now, Fairwinter's Helm effectiveness can be very powerful depending on the type of enemy you face, as each enemy killed by your empowered melee or your finisher will release a wide burst of energy that can either be small or very large. Against a low level minor enemy, you can be looking at around 10 meters, which is good, but not really what most players will be looking for. Now, say if you use this against a powerful at it goes up to 15 meters, a major at 20 meters, and an ultra at 25 meters. So each empowered melee or finishes conducted on each type of enemy will increase it by plus 5, which is quite amazing for the amount of coverage you gain. In truth, you're most likely going to be procking this when up against powerfuls and majors, as they are the two most common enemy types you face, and the ones that get targeted the most because of their sheer health and damage they do. At the same time with this happening, the duration effect will also vary upon the types of enemies you face. So if you use your finisher on a ultra for example, it will last longer, but on a minor it will last a little bit less. So it seems to indicate to you to use your finisher on the higher mobs you face as it will last much longer compared to the lower mobs. With all this happening as well, you also get a 30% debuff and suppression effect when this is all pulled off. So in general this exotic here is top tier to use especially with the Wither Horde exotic as dot taking effect it has. But what about the situation where it's too dangerous to get up close and personal to pull this off? Well, that's where the Warbind cells come in now, with the use of Cellular Suppression, Global Reach, Warmind Protection and Vasputin Blessing. With the mods active, I can use the Cellular Suppression and Global Reach mod to shoot out a large wave of energy onto enemies and suppress them long enough for me to get up close and finisher 
a major or powerful mob to further suppress them and debuff them. The War Man Protection mod is there to reduce the amount of damage is done to me as not all enemies may get affected by the mods itself. And then Asputin Blessing allows me to collect myself back for a small return of melee energy back. So I'm using everything I have in my gear. As you can see I have created the build where we can suppress and debuff enemies on a large scale and control the chaos for not only me but for my allies as well which is useful when taking part in a dungeon or public event or heroic based mission such as Nightfalls. And like I mentioned before in the video, you don't need to run the same subclass I'm running as other subclasses that focus on many aspects of that field can work perfectly as well, making the build a jack of all type build to use. It's also very handy to main when you have a low light player in your fire team who wants to earn some new gear but can't, as you can press and debuff the enemies to make it a bit more easier for them to handle. Only slightly. Now usually I would have a downside to most of the builds I create and test, but this time around the build is pretty clean from the get go, which overall means this build is something that you should be maining when you get the chance. Only downside I could possibly think of to using this is how much it can trivialize most content, but to be honest that can be said for any weapon or high level DPS build or generally if you have a high enough light level in general. My final thoughts on the build is that it's great for all PvE content as it will allow you to take on the most chaotic content in game with ease. Of course, some content may require you to switch it up to accommodate them, which the build can do as the helm is very flexible on its own and the mods as well can be changed to empower or support the build further. With the right team, taking on nightfalls or raids can become a breeze and definitely something always worth bringing with you just for its simplicity in its usage. So we come to the end of the video, if you enjoyed the video then please by all means do leave a like and a sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.